This is Hans Niemann, the 19-year-old who is famously known for breaking Magnus Carlsen's 53-game unbeaten streak. After achieving a peak rating of 2706, making his way into World Top 50, Hans received tons of cheating accusations from top players, especially from the world champion himself, Magnus Carlsen. Despite his questionable growth within a span of a couple months, especially at the FIDE level, the Super Grandmaster still has his ups and downs. In the 16th round of the 2022 World Blitz Championship, Hans was about to face Giga Kupadatija, a strong 2600 rated opponent from Georgia. Hans starts out the game with d4, and Kupadatija responds with knight f6. Both players continue developing their pieces, and the game transposes into the Grunfeld variation of the Bogo Indian defense. This is more of a positional variation, in which Hans plays knight b to d2, putting his knight on an undesirable square that blocks the eye of his dark squared bishop. However, the purpose of this move is to force Kupadatija to either trade off his bishop for the knight or retreat the bishop after a move like a3, which was played in the game. Usually, it's advised to keep the bishop pair, but Kupadadzija trades off the bishop in order to gain a faster development of his pieces. Both players go on to fianchetto their light squared bishops and castle. Kupadadzija develops his last minor piece, potentially aiming to push c5 soon to break through the center. Hans plays rook c1, which is a logical move that gets a rook into the game, and Kupadadzija replies with a5. A5 is particularly a great move here, since it adds an attacker to the b4 square. If Hans were to play b4, Kupadadzija would simply recapture, which would open up the A file for the rook on A8, increasing its activity. Knowing that he isn't ready to push B4 yet, Hans moves his queen to C2 with the goal of connecting the rooks. Kupadadzija follows with bishop E4, after which Hans simply moves his queen to safety on C3. A couple of moves are played, and Kupadadzija finally launches C5, attempting to open up the position. Hans plays B4, counterattacking the queen side to initiate more activity, although it's a slight inaccuracy, since it once again allows Kupadadzija's rook to laser down the entire A file after after exchanging the pawns. After the quiet move, h6, Hans can't just let Kupadadzija's rook occupy the a-file, so he plays rook a1, offering Kupadadzija a rook trade. A few moves are played, and the queen side becomes locked up, and the d-file opens up. Here, Kupadadzija plays e5, and Hans responds with bishop h3, taking advantage of the open diagonal. Both rooks are soon traded, and Kupadadzija plays queen d6, preparing a nice little tactic. The idea is to remove the defender of the bishop on d2 by capturing the knight on f3. Hans obviously sees this tactic and moves his bishop out of the eye of the queen and puts it along a strong diagonal, adding more pressure on the e5 pawn. Kupadadzija decides to remove one of the attackers of his e5 pawn and takes the knight on f3, also messing up Hans' kingside pawn structure. After the quick trade, Kupadadzija plays queen d3, moving his queen to a more active square, attacking both the f3 and c4 pawns. Hans takes the opportunity to take the pawn on e5, since it has one less defender than before, and Kupadadzija takes on c4, which is a mistake! After queen a8 check, knight f8, bishop d6, and knight h7, we can see that Kupadatsuja's pieces are gradually becoming less and less active. However, Hans plays queen e8 here, which actually loses his advantage. Even though it successfully defends the pawn on c4, bishop f1 was a much better move that not only protects the pawn and defends against any checks, but also forces Kupadatsuja to move his queen. A few moves are played, and Kupadatsuja is able to push his c pawn, and Hans relocates his bishop to a more useful diagonal that stares down Black's king. Here, Kupadadzija makes a big blunder and plays knight f6. This allows Hans to take the knight on f8 and simultaneously attack the knight on f6, causing Kupadadzija to potentially lose a piece. Hans sees this simple idea and takes on f8. Even though this is a completely losing position for Kupadadzija, he goes on to play since Hans has less time on the clock, so there may be chances of turning the game around. After Kupadadzija follows with queen d4, protecting the knight on f6, Hans responds with the simple and obvious move, queen c7, threatening checkmate on f7. Kupadatsuja responds with knight d5, blocking the eye of the bishop while also attacking the queen. With just under 10 seconds left, Hans doesn't have much time to calculate, so he trades off the bishop for the knight, simplifying the position. However, this was a massive blunder, since he overlooked the fact that Kupadatsuja doesn't have to capture the bishop right away. Instead, Kupadatsuja finds the clever move, queen d1 check, forcing Hans to play king g2, and then takes the bishop on d4. But now, it's with check, which means Kupadatsuja gained a tempo. The position is now equal, but Kupadatsuja has a passed b pawn, which Hans needs to be careful of, given the fact he has just a matter of seconds to make his moves. The game has come down to a queen and pawn endgame, which is one of the most challenging endgames to play in chess, since queens are the most
most mobile piece. It's even more challenging considering the minimal amount of time both players have left on their clocks. A few moves are played, and here Kuparatsuja makes a careless mistake and plays king g8, missing the fork on the king and pawn after queen b8. Now that the b pawn that was so close to promotion is gone, this game is a dead draw, unless either player makes a fatal error. A ton of queen moves are played, and then here, the game flips around once again in favor of Hans, after Kuparatsuja blunders with queen c6. Though it looks like another ordinary queen move, he missed the fact that Hans could play queen e7 check, following queen g5, picking up not only one, but two of Kuparatsuja's pawns. We see Hans getting a little excited after Kuparatsuja's blunder, but little did he know, this was all about to backfire. Now, all Hans has to do is either force a queen trade or slowly push his pawns towards promotion. The next couple of moves go all well, until Hans moves his king to g5, a game-changing blunder. This careless mistake allows Kuparadzija to force a mate in two after queen g1 check, followed by queen g6 mate. Hans realizes he has just thrown the game, laughs it off, resigns, drops a piece, and walks off in disbelief.